Hey guys, so today we're going to go through and we're going to actually demo something really cool. We're going to demo a deployment using CodeFresh to a Kubernetes cluster that was deployed via ACS Engine on Microsoft Azure. So bear with me, there's going to be a little bit of moving parts, but we're going to go ahead and walk through each part of the process and show you how simple it is. So first off, prerequisite, pretty much make sure you have a Kubernetes cluster available on Azure. You could have deployed that from Azure Container Service, or you could have done that through a GitHub 101 Quick Start template through ACS Engine. Uh, so as long as you have your cluster ready to go, you should be ready to start. Just to show you my resource groups, I have my uh, cluster right here. And so this is going to be the one that we're going to be deploying to. So I have Kubernetes all ready to go on Azure. Now I can go over to CodeFresh and I can get started. Uh, the next start is going to be to actually add a repository. So we're going to use a demo application that CodeFresh actually has. Um, it's actually called DemoChat. So I have already forked it, but if we want to go over here, I can show you CodeFresh, or it's actually in the Containers 101 demo chat. Okay, so this is the application here, and then I have forked it. So I can select it from my repository here from within CodeFresh. We press Next. We're going to select Docker file that I have my own. And then I'm going to go over here to uh, just pretty much cl keep clicking Next. Uh, you don't have to modify anything. And now I'm going to go ahead and press Build. So it's going to actually build the image for that application. While it goes through and does that, and we can actually see now in my repo that I have my demo chat. This was when I was playing with theirs. But you'll see why I actually forked it so that I can make changes. And we were actually going to demo rolling updates to our Kubernetes cluster. So that's going to be really fun. So after we get that part all configured while it's building, let's go ahead and go over here and go to Account Settings. Uh, and then let's go ahead and go to Integration. You'll notice here that you can actually integrate Slack, your Docker registry. We'll come back to this uh, in a second. But then you can also do Kubernetes. So when you go to configure, uh, I actually already have a custom provider enabled. So I'm going to actually delete my current one. And we're going to re-add it. So I'll show you how simple that process is. So if I go back over to Collaborators Integration, we're just going to refresh this here. Now, underneath Add Provider, because I don't have any providers for Kubernetes since I just deleted it, I have the option of choosing GCP for Google Cloud Platform, or I can choose Custom Providers, where I'm going to enter my Azure information. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, Custom Providers. I'm going to hit the down arrow here and hit the Add Cluster button. So from here, I can go and add my information. So I'm going to call this Kube Azure. Uh, I can go ahead and do the host certificate and token. Now, since I don't have this information readily handy, handy, CodeFresh actually does something really cool by giving me a neat little link. I can just open in a new tab where I can see quick start commands to go ahead and access that, oh, access those details. So I'm going to click this and scroll down a little. So I can actually grab the host IP just from copying and pasting this command. I'm going to bring up my terminal, and I'm going to go ahead and paste that right in here. Now, I already have my terminal connected to my Kubernetes instance, so that's kind of why it makes it a little simpler. So I'm actually, I get this information spit right back to me. So I can go over to here and paste that right in. And then we'll go back to the terminal, and actually we'll grab the next command. By the way, if you're curious of what terminal I'm using, you can go to my blog, jessicadean.com, and there are plenty of blog posts that explain how to set that up and how to do cool fun fonts like Star Wars Rebel Alliance symbol. Uh, so I'm going to copy and paste this to pull the start information. And I'm going to go over here. For the purpose of having things uh, secretive, I'm actually going to drag this to my other screen real quick and just run this command so I don't have my, uh, my cert published online. But as soon as this command runs, it's actually going to give me my certificate that I can uh, go ahead and copy and paste. So give me just a moment to paste it. There we go, I'm copying it. Okay. And so I'm going to paste that in. And then I'm going to go grab the token, which again, I'm just copying and pasting. I'm going to clear my screen here. I can drag this back over, and we'll go ahead and paste that. And I'm going to copy and paste this actually from the other window again. Great. So I have that uh, copy to my clipboard. I'm going to paste that in. And now I'm going to press Save. So that's it. That's all I needed to do to essentially set up access uh, from my 
uh, CodeFresh instance to Kubernetes. So now if I go over and click on Kubernetes on the left-hand side, I actually see uh, my services here, and I can scroll down and see uh, different uh, information. So the next thing that we want to do, and actually if you notice, I do have a demo chat running from when I was testing this before. Let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, and then otherwise, and I'll actually also delete uh, the Mongo database. So for right now, there's not much running in default aside from what's normally created from ACS Engine. So this is, for all intents and purposes, it's a new uh, Kubernetes cluster host. So let's go ahead and do a few things. First, let's go ahead and add a service. Uh, let's go ahead and select the namespace as just being default. And for the first time, let's go ahead and just do Mongo. Uh, so we'll just create a very simple Mongo service. For this, we're going to go ahead and publicly expose port 27017. Uh, That's going to be the same internal port, so I'll quickly update that now. And we're going to go ahead and choose Mongo latest. You don't have to select the latest tab. It'll automatically pull it, but just for my own uh, practice, that's just what I'm used to. And otherwise, we, we could go into environment variables or resources, but for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to keep it nice and simple. Uh, there's no image secret to pull. We've set our ports. We've set, specified the name pace. We're just going to have one replica. So we'll go ahead and press deploy. And so that's actually, whoops. Oh, service name. Sorry. You have to make sure you use uh, lowercase, obviously. So. Uh, that's actually going to go out and deploy. And something cool here, which I'm going to bring this up, while it's deploying and pulling an IP address in CodeFresh, I can actually watch it from my local terminal so I can see exactly what's happening. So let's go ahead and do um, watch get services. That's going to happen in the top window here. So I can see Mongo is deploying, the external IP address is pending, and we're going to watch this as it deploys in the background with CodeFresh. I can also do the same command. And rather than services, we can go ahead and do uh, get pods. So I can also see that pod is running. Uh, it is still pending here for the external IP, but that's going through and, and configuring setting itself up. So that part's perfect. The next part we want to do is set up our service for demo chat. So we've already cloned our repository, which again, we can see back over here. Uh, we can see this build that completed successfully. So let's go ahead and go back over to Kubernetes. We're going to go ahead and add a service again. This time, I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, demo chat, which, again, we learned last time, do lowercase. Uh, demo chat. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at one replica for now. And then I'm going to expose port 80. For here, we're going to actually do something a little different. So let me go ahead and go over here in my new tab. Um, and I actually want to grab an image uh, name that I want it to pull because this is an image that I actually created. You'll notice the date is today's date, uh, September 29th, which is the date of the video. Current time is current time is actually 2.14, but obviously five, six minutes ago is when I ran that build. So we can see the, the latest image that was built was 2.09 PM on September 29th. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and click in here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, this image location. And I'll show you, this actually published to my CodeFresh registry. There is some minor configuration needed to set up your CodeFresh registry, but we will show that um, in a little bit. Let's go ahead and just walk through setting up this demo chat application. So I'm going to copy this image location. We'll go back to the other tab. Uh, right in here is where we're going to go ahead and paste that image in. Uh, and the image pull secret is where uh, I actually have to create the Oh, sorry. I need to select the namespace. That's right. Sorry, part. Sorry about that. So now I can see the image secret that I've already created previously. Uh, I can go ahead and see CodeFresh is selected now. The internal port is actually going to be 5,000 for this app. Uh, so again, just to recap, because uh, again, I know there's a lot of moving parts. We are using my Kube Azure cluster that I've already connected to CodeFresh. Uh, we're just using the default namespace. We have given it a name of demo chat. And the image I'm using is the one that I pulled from my repository that I built. And that's it. I'm exposing port 80, specifying port 5000. I don't need any environment variables. Uh, I don't need to change any resources, though this is a cool feature. You can actually change the, the hardware specifications for your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but we're going to keep it simple right now. So now we're going to go ahead and press deploy. And again, while that's actually going through and deploying, uh, not only can I see that my Mongo completed, and I now have a public IP address, if I go back over to terminal, I can see Mongo completed here with the same IP address. Uh, I can see that it is running here. I can also see that demo chat is currently creating the container and the application. So I can see the service is pending with the external IP and the container is pending. Now, while that's going and the demo chat application is getting ready and set up to run, let's also set it up to automate. So anytime I make changes 
to that particular application from my GitHub repo, it will automatically fire off uh, new builds. We can also add in their unit test while we're at it. So let's go over to repositories and go ahead and click on the demo chat application. I'm going to scroll down a little. For unit, te unit tests, I'm going to keep something very simple. I'm going to do npm test. Uh, I'll scroll down a little bit more to deploy script. Uh, this time around, I'm actually going to select Kubernetes. We're going to select uh, Kube Azure. Again, that is my cluster. We're going to select the default namespace. It's going to run on the master branch. And then we're going to go ahead and select the service we want is to connect it to that demo chat service that, again, if we look at this, uh, is creating. And we actually do have a public IP address now, so that part finished. We'll take a look at that in a second. Again, I don't need any environment variables, so I'll go ahead and press Save. And now we'll go ahead and press Build. So now that's going to go through and set up that build. Uh, and now we've set up, again, unit testing, and we've added in automation. So if I go pull this IP address, I'm just going to copy this to the clipboard here. And I can actually go, again, over to Kubernetes, take a look at that service running. Here's the IP address here in my uh, Kubernetes uh, dashboard from CodeFresh. If I also go over to my terminal locally, I can see that same uh, external IP address for both demo chat and for my MongoDB database. So now I'm going to paste that IP address in right here. And I can actually see my web application is already up and running. So it was that simple. Uh, I mean, we are probably five minutes into the video. That's it. That's all that you need to do to deploy a web application to Kubernetes cluster running on uh, Microsoft Azure uh, using or deployed from Azure Container Service Engine. Now let's make it a little bit more uh, fun. Like I said, we, uh, we set up automated builds from our repository. So now let's go ahead and test that and make sure that works. To do that, I'm actually going to go to my own fork. So let's go ahead to my profile here. I'm going to edit it just on the web, uh, freestanding. So I'm going to go to my repositories, click on demo chat, which again is my fork. Now I'm going to go into templates, and we're just going to modify the login HTML page. That's it. We're just going to make a little minor change here where, where it says let's chat. Let's go ahead and say let's chat uh, MSFT for Microsoft. Now I'm going to go ahead and commit my changes. And this part is where it gets really cool, right? So I committed that. So that should automatically start firing off a build where when it does fire off the build, I'll actually end up seeing it create a new container. Uh, a new service, and it will actually replace the existing one and upload a new one, all with no downtime. So if I go back over here to CodeFresh C repositories, I should be able to see that build firing off. And I do see it does. The update login page was what I updated. So it's now building the Docker image that we're going to use. And as it does that, it's actually going to, if you look down here at the bottom screen, you'll watch it as it creates a new pod uh, with my new application with the updates and then switches that over to the current one that's running. So effectively, there's no downtime. Everything has been automated through this process. It's currently running the deploy script right now. So now we see right here, containers creating for that new application. It's terminating the old one. And then the new one should be uh, fully up and running here as it swaps out. Now I can go over here and simply refresh this page. And now I see let's chat Microsoft. So it was that simple, right? All I have to do is make the changes from the code and CodeFresh and Microsoft Azure will take care of the rest um, and so will Kubernetes uh, from replacing those pods. Now, I mentioned uh, earlier on how in order to get your images so you are using your own images, CodeFresh actually has their own image repository. So to configure that, you actually go under user settings. Um, and actually, sorry, it's not under user settings. You go under account settings. You're going to go under integration. You're going to go to configure. And you'll actually choose, I already have mine set up, but CodeFresh registry, you would actually choose to add a registry and you would choose your CodeFresh registry uh, and then follow the steps to walk through from there. So I don't, I don't necessarily need to, to walk you through that part of it, but I did want to point out how you would set that up. After you set that up, you would be able to go into your images and you can choose to, again, you would have your own images where you could go in and grab that uh, image address that you can use in your services and in your repositories. So that's pretty much it. That's the short and sweet of it. If you have any questions, feel free to ping me. I'm available on Twitter at JLDean, no relation to James Dean, so that is D-E-E-N. 
And then you can also check me out on my blog, jessicadean.com. Again, thank you for watching. Hit up CodeFresh. You can go to codefresh.io and learn more about them. So you would sign in with a GitHub account, a Bitbucket account, or a GitLab account. And from there, you can go ahead and get started. You can also, if you are not currently using Microsoft Azure, you can sign up for free credits on Microsoft Azure, and you can get started there as well. Take care. Have a great day.